Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. So if you are new around here, I'm glad to have you. My name is Megan. On our off-grid homestead here in South Carolina, we raise rabbits as a meat source for our family. We have an ever-evolving number of rabbits between those that are growing out, those that we are culling, dispatching, our breeders. You know, we are constantly changing it up, trying to improve our rabbitry so you never quite know how many rabbits we have on our property. Currently, I'm thinking the number's at about 20. Eight of those rabbits are ones we are going to discuss today because they have been my troublemakers. This litter of eight were bred by Moretta, our black rabbit, and Flar, our red eye white New Zealand. Both parents are large, so you would expect decent sized kits and for them to grow at a decent rate. These just aren't doing that. Now, I track all of my weights in this rabbit logbook that I created. This has allowed me to see exactly what my rabbits weigh, compare them to previous litters, and know that I'm not crazy and it's not in my head. These kits really are growing smaller. They're staying smaller even though they're eating the same amount. Makes no sense, right? So I'm here to show you what I do when I have a litter that is smaller, how I combat this to get them to grow up, and what I do about it to prevent it in the future. So one thing about our rabbitry that you may not be experiencing on your rabbitry is that we don't necessarily feed rabbit pellets. We especially don't feed any kind of complete rabbit pellet diet at all. I don't buy commercial rabbit pellets, in other words. So when I do feed pellets, they are whole alfalfa pellets with alfalfa being the only ingredient and that's the only pellets our rabbits receive. On top of that, they receive fresh greens, weeds, grasses we pick, tree leaves, uh, tree limbs, sticks, things like that. Things I grow in the garden like carrot greens, bell peppers, cucumbers, different kind of waste from the garden like the leaves of the cucumber plants, okra leaves, things like that. Sunflower seeds, oats, pumpkin seeds, the list basically goes on and on. They get a variety in their diet and I make sure I do it in a way that meets all of their nutritional needs. Now if you're interested in feeding a diet like that, I do actually have a book out on it called Feeding Meat Rabbits for Free that kind of breaks down everything that you can feed them, why you can feed it to them, why you can't feed it to them, and how to meet their nutritional requirements. I put a whole lot of research into how we feed our rabbits, so that way I know that they're growing appropriately. Our rabbits are also not free fed. So some rabbit treats will free feed their lactating does, which means they constantly have a supply of food available to them and will free feed their grow out kits. Again, constantly having a supply of food for them. We don't do that here on our homestead because we feed a lot of fresh foods and they will wilt and go bad. So I do try to feed a good combination that has everything they need in it and feed more than what they need in one feed so that they have extra, but I don't free feed because I don't want the waste. So is my rabbit feeding program why our kits are growing small? No, not so much. Not in the case of this litter. And if you have this going on in young kits, kits that are more nursing than they are eating pelleted food or whole foods, then your food is not your problem with your grow out kits. So like I said, this occurred with a litter of eight. Not an incredibly large litter for a New Zealand rabbit. Our rabbits have had up to 12 kits in one single litter and been able to feed them appropriately with no signs of trouble. However, this litter is the first known litter for this doe. And first time moms are notoriously bad moms when it comes to rabbits. I always, always, always expect a problem when I have a first time mom with rabbits. Now, this rabbit was brought to us already as a mature adult rabbit. She was captured in a park and given to us to be a breeder in our program. So she may have had previous litters, but not that we are aware of. We're not even quite sure on her age, but she has done fantastic with her litter, except for them growing a little small. And I wouldn't know that if it wasn't for my book, my rabbit log book. So let's look at the data. We're gonna compare these rabbits at four weeks old. The largest kit was 8.8 .8 ounces. 
The smallest kit was 5.6 ounces. If we compare that to Manali's letter, at the same age, Manali's largest kit was 13.5 ounces and her smallest kit was 11.6 ounces. Manali's smallest kit at 11.6 ounces was still almost three whole ounces bigger than Moretta's largest kit at the same age. And in rabbits, especially when they're four weeks old, three ounces is a lot. So we can also look at averages because I do kit averages for each week. So average for Manali's litter at this four week mark was 12.8 ounces. Average for Moretta's was 7.5 ounces. So it's over a five ounce difference in average kit size. That is incredible. What is the difference in between Moretta and Manali's litter? Well, Manali has had kits before, known kits before, because when we bought her at auction, she came with a litter of kits. So there is one thing. Moretta, a known litter of kits, Manali has had at least one. So she's not a first time mom. A second thing is Moretta has eight kits in her litter. Manali had three. She originally had eight, one was stillborn, and four died in a freak accident trying to get out from under the rabbit tractor. They were like digging out, I don't know, they got trapped under it somehow. It's the only time we've ever lost kits in a rabbit tractor like that. I don't even know quite how they done it or what happened. It was some kind of weird accident. And that, they passed away at two weeks old. So for the first two weeks, Manali was feeding seven kits because one was stillborn. She did have eight. And then after two weeks old, she only fed three kits where Moretta has fed eight kits this whole time. So when I weighed them at four weeks, obviously Manali's were bigger because she had less kits to give all that milk to as where Moretta had more kits to give her milk to. So there is one reason you can have smaller kits. If you have a larger litter, then there's less milk to go around. So for Moretta, she had more kits and it was her first known letter. It's two things. Now she was given as much food as she could eat and even more food than she could eat to try to keep up that milk supply. But again, her kits grew smaller and I have the data to prove it because of my rabbit logbook, y'all. This thing is like my best friend. And so I notated all of that down so I can look at it and say, okay, this is why her letters grow in small. We will give her another shot, compare that data to this data and see how we do and if it improves. Now she is bred again and she's due in a week. So we will actually get to see really well how this data improves. And I will make a video to let you know how her next litter grows out. But how do we fix it when we have small kits? How do we get them to grow? That is the question. So we're gonna go through and we're going to weigh our kits. And I'm going to show you what I did to help them grow. And I'm going to prove it to you by weighing them and seeing if we can notice a difference in their weights. What you're gonna notice first is six of Moretta's kits are in the rabbit tractor behind me and two of Moretta's kits are actually in the rabbit tractor with her. What I did, because her kits are growing so small, at four weeks I was like, nope, stop, hold the line, we have to do something different. So what I did was I took the four largest kits in her litter and I pulled them out of that rabbit tractor and put them over here behind me. Now they're already eating food with her and hay and everything at four weeks old. So it was okay to pull them out and put them over here behind me because they're already eating that food. It's not gonna cause tummy issues. So the four largest kits got pulled out at four weeks old and put in the rabbit tractor behind me. The following week at five weeks old, I pulled out two more kits and put them in the rabbit tractor behind me. So then we have six kits in that rabbit tractor behind me. And that leaves two kits in there with Moretta. Now, why did I do this? Because the less kits you have in there with her to drink the milk, the more milk those other kits get. So by pulling the four largest out, I gave the four smallest a chance to catch up. And so then by pulling the two largest out in the next week, I gave the two smallest of the entire litter a chance to catch up. Now they still may be smaller because they were really small, but they should have gained some weight by now and we should be able to notice 
a difference. So we're going to catch all six in here, put them in my blue tub behind me so that as we weigh them, I can put them back in the tractor and make sure I'm keeping a good idea on who I've weighed and who I haven't. And then we'll weigh the two smallest. After we weigh them, they will go into the rabbit tractor with their litter mates and Miranda will be in this tractor by herself. That will give her a week's rest to eat, relax, stop producing milk, just kind of be her own person before she has her next litter of kits. Current weight on this one is one pound, one ounce, 483 grams. Next rabbit is 13.7 ounces or 388 grams. This one is one pound, 1 1.5 ounces, 496 grams. So far, this rabbit is our biggest. Now, when I separated the first time for those four, I did two black and two white just because that's what the biggest were. Oh, sorry, baby. So, I'm expecting that this was probably one of the first ones I separated. That one is 500 grams, which is one pound, 1 1.6 ounces. So, these two are the biggest at the moment. This one is one pound, one ounce, 482 grams. And last out of this tractor is 428 grams, which is 15.1 ounces. So I have my friend here, this is the biggest out of the rabbit tractor. I want y'all to see this data so you can clearly see in your mind the difference okay these are my rabbit weights from the rabbit tractors i'm going to give them to you in pounds and ounces because i think that is an easier way for most people to understand weights so i had one pound one ounce one pound 1.5 ounce one pound 1.6 ounce one pound one ounce 13.7 ounces 15.1 ounces as you can see from this data, I had four rabbits that were over one pound, two rabbits that were close to a pound, but not a pound. So there you go. I had my four that I moved over at four weeks old, the biggest of her litter. Then I had my two that I moved over the week after that. Now, let's pull out the last two out of her tractor, weigh them and see how their weights compare. I have my last two rabbits. And as you can see, they're much smaller. Let's see how small. Okay, our white rabbit is up first. 9.2 ounces on that white rabbit. Now our black rabbit is bigger. We're at 349 grams and that is 12.3 ounces. Can you see the size difference? Okay, come here friends. They're not gonna pose well because, well, they're kits and they've never done it before. Two blobs. <laughs> this black one looks almost like a whole week older than this one. So right now they're nose to nose, same nose length. Do you see how much difference this black one is? Like this is a huge difference. This is a little ridiculous, friends. And you have been getting all of mama's milk for this past week. And you are still this small. At six weeks old. Do you realize, you little white dude, you are the size of a three week old kit. You're half the size you should be. And you, my little black friend, even though you are the biggest of the litter, you are not the size of a six week old kit. You are too small. You're about the size I would expect at four weeks. So you can clearly see the size difference. This one was pulled at four weeks. This one remained with mom to six weeks. So the four kits that were removed at four weeks old 
gained quite a bit of weight. Let's look at our largest sizes at four weeks old. So the largest we had at four weeks old was 8.8 .8 ounces, 8.3 ounces, 8.3 ounces, 8.3 ounces. So we had three at 8.3 and one at 8.8. .8. Two weeks later, and they are all four over a pound now. So that means they doubled their body size in that two week period by me pulling them for mom. So they were pulled early, not getting mama's milk and still doubled their body weight. That is a great indication that there was a major problem going on with mama's milk. Typically, kits pulled at four weeks old don't do as well as kits that are left with mom until that six week mark because they get food and mama's milk until six weeks so they get double the calories but not these guys i've seen the reverse happen by leaving them with mom they continued to stay small so at four weeks old our two smallest kit sizes were 5.7 ounces and 5.6 ounces so 5.7 and 5.6 at four weeks were our two smallest currently our two smallest are 12.3 ounces and 9.2 ounces so one did double its body weight one did not so what i recommend you do is for one track your litter weight i track at birth one week two weeks three weeks four weeks eight weeks 12 weeks 16 weeks if I'm having an issue with kits growing, I check more often. So that's why I'm doing a six week wait on these kits is to kind of see how we're growing and get an update. Um, you don't have to check at six weeks. You don't have to check at all. I used to not check at all. But by checking, I can see the problem and I can compare it to past data. Let's compare our four largest to Manali's three kits and see how they compared. So at six weeks old, Manali's kits were one pound, 1.8 ounces, one pound, 4.5 ounces, one pound, six ounces. So these kits who were way, way smaller, like way smaller than Manali's at four weeks old had almost caught them or had caught them, you know, pretty right there at it by six weeks old. They had gained that much weight just by moving from their mom to their own rabbit tractors. Now Manali's kits were still small and that's why none of them are going to be kept back as breeders. But she come pregnant from auction and we don't know who the sire is of that litter. So it may have been a small rabbit that those were mixed with. We just don't know. This next litter that she just had, she was bred to our Californian buck. We know his size, we know her size, so we expect much bigger kits from her this time around. So my advice to you is if you have a small litter of kits, and I'm not talking like just a few in a litter, I'm talking kits that aren't growing well. They are small in size. Is for one, weigh them. See their growth pattern know if small kit is normal for that doe or not because if that doe buck mating always throws small kit don't mate them together get a different buck get a different doe try something different you don't want small kits when you're raising them for meat because that means you get less meat out of the deal nobody wants that and then start pulling your kits early by removing half of the kits at first a little more the week after and then finally removing all of the rest on that third week i am forcing a wean on that mom there's less kits to drink that milk so her supply naturally decreases and it keeps her from getting mastitis now another thing i do when we have small litters of kits as in small in stature not small in number is we don't keep any of them back for future breedings quality should be more important to you than quantity and that is something i'm really trying to drive home with our rabbitry this year we only want to keep the biggest rabbits not the most number of rabbits the biggest rabbits that produce large litters that produce large kit that are easy to breed that's our goals and so we unfortunately will not be keeping you no you will have to go to freezer camp 
and I'm very sorry about that. What I'm going to do on her next litter of kids to try to combat this is for one, it'll be her second litter. So her memories should be bigger. She should produce more milk. She should have a greater mothering ability because she knows more of what to do now. So I expect her kids to grow larger anyways for that reason. But I'm also adding a greater amount of oats into her diet because oats will boost milk supply. I'm currently using rolled oats because I found them cheaper than any other kind of oats. You can use whatever kind of oats you want as long as they are only oats. You don't want oats that have any kind of additives to them. Like don't use brown sugar oats for oatmeal. Like use the plain old fashioned oats. The ones at your grocery store are fine. I got these from the feed store. Um, whatever you got that's available, go ahead and use those. And that will boost the milk supply. So I'm gonna increase her amount of oats on this next litter. We will track their weights very closely and make sure that they are growing bigger. If not, I will again remove half of her litter at four weeks the next half of that at five weeks and then finally the rest at six weeks and see how they wait out. Now she is a pretty good mom, even for being a first timer and she is a large rabbit. So I'm hoping her next litter does better. If not, we work on a three strike you're out policy here on our homestead. This does count as like one strike against her. Her next litter, if they don't improve, that'll be strike two. Her third litter, I will pair her with a different buck and see if that makes a difference and kit size and breeding um, and if it does then that won't count against her and she will just be bred with that buck from now on and that's why we keep multiple bucks two or more on our homestead is so we have that ability to swap bucks and see if a different genetic combination results in a different type of rabbit that we like more for now though we're just going to watch these kits grow they've got another uh, about six oh man six to ten weeks depending on how fast they grow we may we may dispatch it 12 weeks with these because they are smaller and rabbits don't gain a whole lot of weight between 12 and 16 weeks we only grow out to 16 weeks if we plan to save their furs other than that just dispatch at 12 weeks um so we will see how that goes yes we will so six weeks or 10 weeks on these guys, they should be much larger than this by then. Um, they are getting a ton of food to eat to bulk them up right now. So hopefully that helps and we get bigger rabbits. Stay tuned to see how Manali's current litter, she gave us four yesterday for a large rabbit. So smaller litter size for her from her eight in the last time, but these rabbits were bigger. So I'm hoping that they grow out bigger. And then Moretta, the mom of these guys, is due in a week and we will see how that litter grows. So if you're interested in following the data on rabbit size and seeing how rabbits grow out, what changes you can make to make your rabbits grow bigger, faster, things like that, make sure you're subscribed and following along. I love the data. I track the data in my logbook. The logbook is for sale on Amazon. You can find the link down below if you want to track the data yourself. And then we can stay in this together and help people grow bigger, better meat rabbits. All I have for you today, friends. I hope to see you at the Farm Where You Live event on April 15th in Asheville, North Carolina. I will be there speaking on raising meat rabbits. Um, I'm super excited for that. I will have a booth there. I will have the rabbit logbook and my Feeding Meat Rabbits for Free book available for purchase there or for you to look through so you can kind of get an idea if you even want to purchase it and then you can come up talk to me ask your questions all of that then so I hope to see you then the link for those tickets is also down below it's April 15th in Asheville North Carolina at farm where you live until next time friends bye we will see you later